everybody, Sir Cedric back with part two of three on my tutorial series about Thor. Last time we used a redrum and some simple routing stuff down here in Thor's routing matrix to show how Thor could be used as a switchable filter. And we assigned those to some buttons and rotaries in the combinator just to have some fun with it in a performance oriented sense. This time we've got a subtractor patch that we're using. And I've turned it stereo using the spider splitter here. And we're going to use Thor as a programmable filter rather than just a switchable filter. Let's take a look here down in our routing matrix. First things first, I've got my audio routing basically the same as the last time. Audio 1 into filter 3's left in, audio 2 into filter 3's right in. And this is the sound we get just running a simple saw waveform up here in subtractor modulated by subtractor's LFO1 on a sort of rising wave. And we also get kind of a cool squelch sound in there as the, uh, as the two frequencies meet each other, and we kind of want to play on that. I'm going to route the audio into filter 3 to be m scaled by LFO2's modulation, 100%. So now, as the frequencies from subtractor and LFO2 cross each other, we get a kind of cool fluttering effect. Not that one. There we go. Uh, that mistake does bring me to another element that I wanted to include in this tutorial. Um, we could accomplish basically this, this flutter sound in Subtractor by itself by just uh, playing with LFO2 up here. What we want to do is make this fun in a, in a performance sense. We want to make this instrument as diverse as possible with just one patch, make as many sounds as we can possibly squeeze out of it. So one simple thing I've set up here just to show what we can do is uh, down here in the step sequencers edit bar, I've programmed a simple two-step pattern, one being the gate length all the way up, one being the gate length all the way down. Here in the routing matrix, I've set the source to be the step, step sequencer gate length, 100% modulating LFO2's rate. So LFO2 stays tempo synced, but we can modulate the rate really quickly by running each step in the step sequencer. Watch. And that can be really, really fun in a performance sense, especially if we set up some sort of trigger to uh, make the step sequencer go. So I have taken the liberty of creating a cool little patch with lots of different routing options and cool little non-standard triggers that we can do. Uh, it looks basically the same as the last patch we had going uh, with the addition of the delay line. This is something I should talk about before I get into the routing. I've routed the left out of Thor into the left in of a delay and back out to the combinator. I've set the delay to 4 milliseconds and the dry wet all the way up. This means that the left channel is going to be 4 milliseconds out of sync with the right channel. Uh, you get a sort of similar effect to old school analog synthesizers and it just adds some some cool fullness to the sound which can be a problem when you're running so many filters across uh, across the sound. Now let's look down here in the routing matrix. Uh, we've got basically the same setup in the audio routing. Audio in 1, filter 3 left in, 100% by LFO2. Same thing for audio 2 into filter 3's right in, 100% by LFO2. We've also got the step sequencer gate length still affecting LFO2's rate based on the pattern we've set down here. This time though, I've got the mod wheel triggering the step sequencer to run and the pitch bend wheel affecting filter 3's frequency scaled by itself. So the higher the pitch bend wheel moves, the more modulation filter 3's frequency is going to experience. In combination with some of the buttons and knobs that I've programmed up here in my combinator, this can be a really, really diverse instrument, and it's just based on a monophonic synthesizer with a filter in front of it. I've got a knob that I'm using to control metallic harmonics. I've got a knob that I can rotate to scroll between filter types in Thor. I've got a knob set to my LFO attack. That's LFO 2 inside of Thor, so you can control when the flutter comes in on your sound. And I've got a knob to adjust chorus amount, also a button to let you activate the chorus or not got a button hooked up to LFO2's tempo sync so you can choose to let it go free and I've got a really cool button that will change the pitch bend range in subtractor from 7 steps to 24 steps and if you remember that down here 
we set the pitch bend wheel to affect filter 3's frequency, this means that on the fly we can click this button and get some really cool variations in between how we're filtering the sound based on how we move the pitch wheel. I've also got a button that switches the mod scale uh, from LFO2 from 100% to minus 100%, and it kind of inverts the sound in the way that uh, it's modulated. And let me do some quick variations on this and show you guys some of the really cool options you can do just affecting Thor. First things first. That's the flutter and fly button, as I like to call it. You get the flutter effect when it's on and the more broad, spacey fly effect when it's off. Now here's the button to increase the metallic harmonics. All I'm really doing is affecting the delay feedback by a certain percentage, um, but what it does is add this really harsh metallic tone over the top of it. And here's how I can change the Thor filter types. And now I'm going to do some experiments with this pitch bend button hooked up to filter 3's frequency and you can see how cool this really is. At the same time, I'm going to be flicking the mod wheel to run each step of the step sequencer, which I've got programmed to my cool little pattern here, and it's going to flip the sound back and forth between a full gate length and no gate length as I'm playing with this pitch bend button. You're going to see how cool this stuff can really be. Anyway, I could jam on that all day. What's important to remember is that we've made all of those effects through Thor's routing matrix and some simple combinator programmings. These are all coming from a monophonic synth using one oscillator, one LFO. We're just playing with all of the external settings and basically creating new synths out of things that we're just messing with, little, little routing combinations. You can have a lot of fun with this. And these are just some simple things that I thought up um, over the last couple of hours that I thought would be really cool to include in this, especially the pitch bend affecting filter 3's frequency scaled by itself. If you didn't notice some of the differences between when I was clicking back and forth on this button, now you can see it. That can be a really cool effect, especially when you hook it up to other parameters. Filter 3's frequency is a very, very simple thing to hook that up to. Anyway, we could go on with this all day. I want to give you a little preview of what my next tutorial is going to be like. I'm going to use two Maelstroms with stereo outs routed into all four of Thor's inputs, and I'm going to take all four of Thor's outputs split to two different channels in a mixer, and we're going to work on using Thor for some complex, super evolving sounds that are really, really interesting. That'll be the next tutorial. This has been Sir Cedric, part two or three in the Thor series. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, everybody.